Hi, my name is Andy Coggins, and I have never shot an um, unboxing video before, and this may be my one and only video. So I apologize for any of the unprofessional quality or the nips and starts and all. But since I've never done one of these before, I'll give you some bona fides. Um, I've been doing computers since I was doing punch cards on a Univac, and the internet was a phone number that you dialed from Middle Georgia College to Georgia Tech, and if the line answered, if the machine answered, you took the handset and you stuck it in a cradle and you got all 300 baud. And so I've kept up with computers since then, used them a lot in my personal and private life, you know, my professional and private life. And uh, KVM switches have been somewhat of a fetish of mine. And so my original KVM switches were the old AT style big key, you know, keyboard plug-ins. Mostly they were rotary switches that would connect electrical pathways you know, from one machine to the other in an attempt to try to reduce you know, you know, uh, the number of peripherals that you needed to you know, be a geek like me. So, um, so anyhow, um, I bought maybe 10 KVM switches throughout my life, 10 different levels of technology. I sort of took a break during the DBI period because um, the technology just wasn't there. Um, the, uh, but after things went to HDMI and, and now DisplayPort, um, I decided to, to let me try the market again. So I went looking and um, I was looking for some very specific things. I was looking for large display formats, at least 1920 by 1200. That's a 16 by 10, not a 16 by 9 movie type uh, ratio. And uh, I wanted extended desktop. So I wanted to run two monitors off of two computers. And believe it or not, that was harder to find than I thought. Um, the ones that I typically ran across were more of the professional series. They were in the $600 range. So when I found this CKL product, I was very impressed. I was very pleased to find something in the $100 to $150 range. And um, um, so, so I bought it. And uh, what I bought was the CKL922HUA. And when I got the thing in, I plugged it up, and I'm fairly careful at how I do these things. Uh, you know, I try not to just plug it all up and hit go, you know. So I did staged turn-ons and all, which I'll, I'll show you when I do the demonstration part. But when I put the applied power to it, it just worked. And I'm like... Holy moly, and it worked better than the box even advertised. They had advertised 1920 by 1080, and I said, well, I can just live with that. But when I plugged it all up, it auto-detected that my monitors were set at 1920 by 1200. So I didn't even have to do anything in the setup. So I was very pleased. And so this is the box it comes in. It's kind of a no-frills, but fairly sturdy package box. comes with a manual, which I found fairly, it's a well-picturized manual. Um, it was pretty well easy to understand. Uh, this one deals with their four-port switch, but I only needed the two-port switch. Um, but it uh, goes through several options, and, 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 they put, and they put in all of the features that, that you would expect. I mean, I guess that the, a demanding public needs, you know, where you can do um, computer switching, you know, using the keyboard and using a mouse and I'm, I'm old-fashioned, so I always just use the front panel because I know that that will work. But it's got all kinds of capability in it that I, I never, I didn't use. So, um, but anyhow, it's good. It's a pretty decent manual for especially what you get nowadays. And so this is what it looks like um, in the box. It's pretty well professionally packaged. Um, they have one of the best cable management schemes that I've ever seen, especially for the homeowner. Um, they minimize the cable um, demand. Usually what you have with KVM switches is once you do the math and you lay it out, it's a lot of cables. And some of those cables, especially in the VGA days, were very thick cables. And so, you know, yeah, you'd, you could get rid of a, you know, you only need one monitor and one keyboard and one mouse to run two or more computers. But man, the cable management became a nightmare. So they found a way to put it all in one cable, all the meat in one cable, and I was very impressed with that. And it worked. All right, this is 
um, one of their uh, new peripherals. So I'm going to see how that works. Um, there's a, a, a USB cable. And this is the, I think this is just the power adapter. Yeah, just the power adapter. And this is the star of the show itself. This is the KVM switch. As you can see, it's nice and compact. And it's well built too. It's nice and tight and, um, but yet stable enough that, you know, when you plug something into it, it won't just jump all over the place. So this is the box itself. It is uh, well made. The cable management is well done. And when I hooked it all up, it just worked. I've done some research on the internet and I've discovered that it's fairly important that I say this. First, I'm not a CKL employee. I buy my own hardware and no one is paying me to do this. All right, here are the items removed from the box. I'll briefly explain each one. This is the front. It has the manual switch uh, switches to switch between computer one and computer two. This is a uh, switch to, to uh, disable the hotkey function, which I'll explain later. This is a bypass USB port that allows you to plug in gaming devices, uh, especially gaming mouses, but probably joysticks and things like that too. And this is the uh, um, um, sound ports for the, um, that, that also bypass this unit in case the, the combined method they use doesn't work. And this is where you plug in a, this is the AB switch that if you enable the hotkey, if you disable the hotkeys, you can use the front panel manual switches to switch, but then if you can't reach this box, they were thoughtful enough to give you an AB toggle switch, and I'll demonstrate it later too, that uh, you can, you know, if this is out of reach or in a closet or under the table somewhere, you can use this plugged in from here by a USB cable to switch between them. So sort of a remote hardwired switch. On the back of the unit, the, the it's divided by computer one, computer two, the A devices, which are the primary displays in the keyboard and mouse, and the B devices, which is the extended display. This is where you plug the keyboard or keyboard and mouse um, peripherals into the into the device itself, uh, and that's the power uh, input and the um, the uh, on-off switch. And uh, this is where you plug the uh, monitor HDMI cables into these gold ports. So um, these are the cables themselves. This is a, your standard power adapter. It does 100 to 240 volts, so it'll work all over the world. Uh, and it outputs point, uh, 5 volts at 0.8 amps, so this is a very low power unit. This is what they call the A cable. The A cables um, go into, the, into this bottom port here. These are the A ports for computer one and computer two. And, on, and, and this collects all the signals inside the box here for keyboard and mouse, which comes out on one port. So you don't have to have two USBs. This goes into one USB on the back of your computer and this does both the keyboard and the mouse. Um, the primary or display one video and then the, the audio jacks um, where the green is always the speaker and pink is always the microphone. This is the one for the second computer. This is the HDMI for the um, extended display. This is the USB cable that you hook the remote switch to the, to the uh, KVM if you have to disable the hotkey function. And I'll explain that a little more later. Okay, the cables that, that you have to provide you have to provide, obviously, the power cables for both of the, the, the PCs and the displays. You have to provide uh, a single HDMI cable. I color code mine, so blue is my primary and red is my secondary. You have to provide an HDMI. I think uh, 1.4 is their spec, but it'll accept a HDMI 2.0. If, and because I've set up a, a special kind of test that covers a wide range of technology, if you have to have an adapter, then make sure you get a good adapter. The my, back of my back of this old machine here is a uh, DVI port, so I'm going to convert from DVI to HDMI. Um, I think I got these at maybe Cables to Go or or Cables USA or something like that, and uh, they were nine or ten bucks a piece. Make sure you get a good one. And make sure you only use uh, an adapter on one end of the cable. Don't adapt. You know, don't put an adapter on one and then use some cheap cable and put another adapter in on this. Uh, 
You know, if you use an adapter in any computer situation, try to only adapt one end. Obviously, the keyboard and the mouse have, uh, have their own cables. This is your standard universal Dell keyboard. Um, and this is an MX518 gaming mouse, Logitech. Um, both of these are pretty old, so um, uh, most I would think that would be representative of what is out there. All right, the test scenario that I'm going to describe is this is uh, uh, about a year old machine now, uh, six months when I started this, but uh, about a year old machine, and it's got an i7 9700K processor in it, and it's got an MSI uh, Z390 Ace motherboard, and it's got a um, um, uh, Asus um, dual HDMI port uh, video card in it. This machine is about eight or nine years old. This has an i3 770K um, Intel processor. It's got an Asus uh, P8Z77 motherboard. It's got a, 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 an NVIDIA, uh, I think 516 a video card, but it's DVI output. But you know they didn't have HDMI on on video cards back when I when I built this machine here. Good. I've hooked everything up in the back. I've uh, I've double checked all the cables, which is highly advisable for anyone working with computers to do. Um, my computer one stuff, PC one's going to PC one. My computer two stuff's going to PC two. My primary monitor is the blue one. It's going to the primary monitor, the secondary is going to the secondary, my keyboard and mouse, the keyboard with the Balaam on it to protect it from EMI um, is the, is, they're in the correct port for keyboard and mouse. The only thing left to do now is a plot, hook up the power from the power adapter and here goes nothing. Okay, well, there's no smoke coming out. So now what I do is I do a phase turn on stage. The first thing I do is turn on this then I'm going to turn on the monitors and then the computers themselves. And we'll go through each step. As you can see, the lights go through a, a cycle. Usually that indicates that the box is doing some kind of self-test. It is, it is woken up in the mode that the PC1 is the, is the one that is the default, which is kind of what I would expect. Um, now the next thing to do is to turn on the monitors. So I'm going to... PC1, or my primary display. And I'm going to turn on the secondary display. And it goes through a self-test as well. It turns green and then it turns amber. Amber indicates that there's no, no signal coming in. I believe that when the thing turns green with this thing on, it has communicated with it to know what it is. So, um, also, I forgot to say that, that in my test, I tried to create as wide of a technology test as I could, at least in my yard. So, the one-year-old machine is a Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC um, device, and this is a, the 10-year-old machine is a Windows 7 Pro um, um, device. Both of them have SSD drives in them, um, so they, they'll boot quickly. So I'm going to apply power first to the Windows 10 machine and see what comes up first. See which display comes up first. Uh, this one over here turned green first, so uh, evidently I've got the plug cables plugged into the wrong video card ports in the back. I've never been able to find a consistent pattern as to which one to plug into to get reliable display one. Okay, now display two is, is awoken. And so, um, and I've noticed that they're set at 1900 by 12, 1200, or 1920 by 1200. And so I did not even have to change it. I mean, the box is advertised at 1920 by 1080, but it auto detected my um, enhanced capability. So it's actually producing, it's actually executing it better than its specified value, which is just another reason that I, I just found this KVM switch superior to all the others I've had. Okay, so I'm going to boot up the second device uh, while that one's on to make sure that it doesn't do anything to the switch. I'm not seeing any different lights or anything like that. Um, and I wouldn't expect anything. The KVM switch 
um, while it will talk to this device and let it know, I mean, from this device's perspective, it's talking to monitors, but it's not showing it on the monitors. This is simulating the monitor signal so that this does not know that it's not being displayed right now. It senses an SSD. Huh? This is one of the original Intel X25 100 gigabyte devices, like 500 bucks 10 years ago. Um, and, but it's a fast boot and it's been very reliable. So it should be on its desktop now. I'm going to switch over to the um, PC2. Yes, okay. And it came up at 1920 by 1200 as well. So um, I'm going to take the keyboard. Oh, control escape, you know, brings up the start menu from for Windows. That works. Ah, ah, but the mouse does not work. Okay, so this is what this device, they, they modified the design between the one I bought a year ago and the one I bought six months ago, and they, they um, advertised this feature. What this is, is that on some gaming devices, um, if, if they trap, you know, the process of trapping the command codes does not allow the device to operate properly. So that's why they thought ahead and they put a, a bypass port on the front. And on the other device part, uh, version of this KVM switch I got, the earliest version, um, this, what I had to do is I had to hot plug the mouse into the front port. That's just like taking the mouse and plugging it into this machine or this machine, except I can switch it through the KVM switch. And but it's like plugging it directly into the computer itself. What this is supposed to do, what the new capability is supposed to be is that you can disable, with this little button here, you can disable the hotkey feature, which means it will no longer trap these keys, and it basically converts the two USB ports on the back to be identical to the bypass port on the front, effectively giving you three gaming ports. And so I, that's, I thought that was just another element of when these guys design something, um, a design a feature, it is the best version of that feature you can have. So um, I'm going to try that. I'm going to disable the hotkeys and and see what happens. Now um, it, it, you have to basically, if you hear that sound, a long beep, and this light stays on, then it it it, it did not go, get out of hotkey mode. You have to just barely touch it. Okay, so the light went off. Now let's see if the mouse works. And lo and behold, the mouse does work. Let's make sure the keyboard works. And the keyboard works. So now, um, I can switch this from the front panel, I can switch this between PC1 and PC2, which I will do to test. But what if this were up under a table or on the shelf? What, you know, do I have to change my life because they chose to give me this bypass feature? No, 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 no. First, let's check to make sure, yes, the mouse is working in Windows 10. The keyboard is working in Windows 10, so the, bike, the, the device is acting like a USB, uh, a KVM switch that I would expect. However, I have to access the front panel, which I do anyhow, but not everybody has that convenience you know, or has the room to do that. So what they thoughtfully did is gave you this AB switch. This basically is a toggle switch that basically you hit it once, it'll, it basically toggles between port 1 and port 2 and it connects via USB and so I'm going to hot plug the USB and what hot plug means is 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 it safe it doesn't mean that hot plug does not necessarily mean things are designed to work but it means it won't explode <laughs> I remember hot plugging video monitors back in the VGA days and and sometimes that hot plug did not work sometimes in a spectacular fashion Okay, let's put that out of the way. Now see, uh, that is the Windows 10 machine. That is computer one. Notice that it, I'll, I'll hold this up here so you can see all the hardware at once. Um, notice that that is computer one. Um, that is, it lights up a, a blue indicator light and that light is com computer one as well. I'm gonna toggle it over. Yes, that is computer two. It shows you that on a little blue indicator light, and this light follows it on the front panel. So now you can toggle it from the front panel or the, or the device itself. 
Also, too, one other feature worth noting is if you notice the desktop icons did not move. Windows is notorious when it switches video modes of reshuffling all your desktop icons and jamming them to the left. Um, if you notice when I switch between these, uh, even on first boot up, on first activation of the uh, with hardware all talking with each other, those icons were, re were rock solid. That's another great feature of this, of this KVM switch. So I was so impressed with the CKL device and just their thought processes and, and just everything about this company. Their price range is right. The box just works. Um, there was so little information out there on KVM switches, especially video stuff. You can, you can read some reviews and stuff, but nothing really showed you how they work or explained some of the things about the KVM switch that I felt it was my duty to make a, to make a KVM um, switch video. So this is Andy Coggins signing off, and I hope this does somebody some good.